a working thing. Anyway, onward. Okay, let's get started. So just want to let everybody know, I just got a, a text from Rachel. She's not, she's uh, doesn't have power, but she's up and she's, uh, she's, they've been in Augusta and then she was staying at a place in Turner. And so she, they don't have power, but she's going to have to reschedule. Okay. okay. Long story short. Yeah. Sorry about that, okay. everybody. And then oh. they, they had two other panel members that were going to join, but, um, it's a long story, but unfortunately she can't make it. I'm really sorry. <laughs> oh, don't be sorry. Hold on her too. <laughs> I'm surprised that all of us are able to get on. Yeah. I thought yeah. maybe we wouldn't have power or Wi-Fi. So yeah. I was working in town today and it, my car got so stuck. I, I I mean, usually my car can plow out of anything and it got completely stuck in Portland. And um, yeah, it took a while to get out. Got my exercise in though today. Right. <laughs> I think we all did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's call this meeting to order, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so this is our Civil Rights Committee workshop meeting. Uh, today is Thursday, December 17th, and it is 7.27 p.m. Okay, I will take attendance. Rafina. Here. Uh, Valerie. Here. Kim. Here. Jim. Here. Mimi. Here. Rafi um, uh, Keela. Here. Uh, Diraj. Here. Uh, Melanie. Here. And Paul. Here. Yay. Yay. I was here. Okay. Okay, so it looks like we will um, skip number two on our agenda and uh, hopefully get that rescheduled um, yeah. at a later time, um, but completely understandable with the weather. Um, number three on our agenda is um, acceptance of our minutes from our last meeting, which was December 2nd. Uh, so we just need a motion for that in a second. Would anybody like to? A second, yeah. if we need a second. Oh, I'll need a first. I don't know if we got a first. Uh, a motion to accept the minutes as as written. Second. All right, great. Uh, all in favor, um, I'll do the roll call vote. Uh, Rafina? Yes. Uh, Valerie doesn't vote. Kim? Yes. Jim? Yes. Keela? Yes. Diraj. Yes. Melanie. Yes. Paul. Yes. All right. Accepted unanimously. Thank you. All right. Moving on to number four um, is our framework for examining town policies. And we are going to have a wonderful um, presentation by Rafina and Paul um, regarding that. So I'm excited to hear this. Um, Rachel, can you pull up the document that I dropped in the doc box, yeah. please? I was just looking for that, and uh, let me find it. While you're looking, I just want to acknowledge that Rafina did the work, and I looked at it and thought it was awesome. <laughs> I, I mean, we, she and I may do more work later, but I just want to acknowledge that. Thank you. Lost it while I was trying to pull up the invitation uh, info. All right, pull that up. Thank you, Rachel. Sure. So this is a draft example um, of um, how I worked for, um, worked with um, 
an old employee of mine and she was helping her town um, city um, come up with a way of going through the policy and procedures. And this is, um, I, we did this about four or five years ago and hers was like 10 pages. It had a lot more into it. Um, I basically just scaled it down um, from, so we can add more to it because a lot of things they did was it was a you know huge it had districts and everything else and demographics and so on but basically page number one um assessing town of cable with policy for racial equality uh equity and equality the purpose of this form to help evaluate the existing policy and procedures across different departments in the town of cape elizabeth for systemic and structural racism and to aid in providing recommendations for policy to promote greater equality and inclusion. This form should be used to evaluate new policy and procedures for implementation. This is coming from what we were tasked with. Mm -hmm. And the five steps to completing the form. Um, again, I really simplified it. We can add more to it, but one, uh, determine the department of policy to evaluate. Two, determine purpose of policy and the impact on the community. Three, provide recommendations, changes to policy if needed. And four, draft recommendations and reports to committee. Five, complete information um, to, to, to town council, excuse me, uh, complete rec um, report, um, complete uh, report to excuse me, town council. So these are, if you go to the next, uh, next page, please, Rachel. So step one, it's right here. It talks about, you know, you, you'd have a title, what department we're doing. We're looking over the policy, the manager's name and manager's contact. Um, step two, determine the purpose and policy and the impact of the community. You know, why, again, you know, why does the police department have, have a policy? You know, you know, is this standard in the industry or is this something new? yada 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 and um you know as you're going through it you know what do you see that would impact you know our our community what we're tasked with and um to to be you know which equal uh, um racial equal um ugh, equity areas does this policy primary impact self-explanatory right there and then uh to see um, what is the uh, root reason um, for inequality cause? Um, what are the um, unintended or um, potential intended consequences of the policy? What harm could it do? You know, we can put our, our, our recommendation on that. And three, provide recommendations, changes what, what needed. Or, you know, draft a recommendation and report to the community, uh, to the committee and give them, after we've done the draft, give them a complete. And then the definitions, this is where to help the person who's evaluating or group. Again, we take those definitions that we have, we put it here so we can always look back up on them and know what we're looking for. And that's a quick and easy way of you know evaluating what we're doing mm -hmm. we can add more to it again when i originally did this it was 10 pages thank you rafina yeah great job thank you again it's example draft for yeah. everybody to put their two cents on well let, let's put our two cents jim did you have something you wanted to say Oh, I was just saying it's very clear and very concise. I think it's very helpful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I agree. I think this will be fantastic to at least once we start with one, like we're going to start with, I can't remember now, but I think it's personnel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this will give us an idea of, you know, what's working, what we discuss, and, and to get a good stepping stone to at least get... Um, get going. So I, I really like this, Rafina. Um, I think I did have a question though. All right, so down at the bottom, um, I think you were talking about it, but I maybe I didn't see the screen, but um, the page. So uh, definitions, 
So we're putting those in for just an understanding about what we would be talking up about with so policy. Can you, you explain that part for me one more time? So sure. So when you're when you're you know you know looking at policies and everything else, just to make sure that what we're looking for, and you know it's based on the terminology. That that's why I said in the beginning, if we we know what we're looking for, it kind of simplifies things. You know, as you're reading and you say, hmm, oh well, you know, um, no people with purple hair, and we say, well, you know, what is what does that what does that affect? You know, um, is it bias, discrimination? You know, and do we see that constantly throughout their policy and procedure books? So you know, the definition that kind of helps you as a um, a template. This is okay. exactly what it is. So that's what would go there, and that's I just threw those in there just to, just so you can see an example of you know what the the purpose of the definition. Yep, I love that. Thank so, you. You're welcome. And I won't be able to see anybody, so just chime on in. You don't have to raise your hand or chime on in. Keila, did you want to say something? Yes, I was going to. I was going to make a suggestion that may uh, for changing definitions to working definitions, so that it's highlighting that it's applicable to how we are defining them in the context and not claiming everyone's definition. So it sort of takes out those who may or may not. I guess. Is the word you know, like those? I think it just it makes it more specific to this is what we mean when we're talking about it. So that if someone else has a differing opinion about a definition, then there's no. You know, mm. I think it's just, well, yeah. Th th well, this is just this is just an example, you know. Th and and as we as we finalize it, then we w then we can put it in here. Mm -hmm. You know, once we, but that's, that's what I'm saying. They're just it's just an example mm -hmm. of where where things. Oh, I love it. This is just me already starting to say, <laughs> Ooh, "Let's do this." I yeah. guess that's me moving forward with this is great. Let's start editing. But so I guess what is our thoughts in terms of moving forward with this? Would we like to work through it? And I I think that's what we should. I, I like that. I, I think then we can all have uh, motions and agreement. Um, on what we want to start with. And again, this is just a template mm -hmm. and, you know, a working template, but I, I, I do like that. I, I, I also like the definitions, maybe in general, that it's understood that these are working definitions, even the ones that we will be um, putting out there on blast, that those are uh, working definitions. So um, yeah, if we have anything that we think could be tweaked here. Now's the time to do that and uh, to get those motions going on agreement. So um, I, I just want to make sure I'm understanding, Keila, you're saying down at the bottom where she has definitions, you think it should say work in definitions? Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I tried to open it as a Google Doc, but the formatting is all weird. So um, I'll just make the note that we want to do that. And Rafina can um, do that on the original. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just sent you the PDF. I also have it in Word as well. Yeah. Okay. But, but, but the, but the thing, the thing about um, the draft sample is when you're putting these, when you're, when you're, you know, let's say we have ten departments. Okay, you've got all your your paperwork together, and you're like, okay, so we're going to start with this department, and the definitions. It, it I understand what you're meaning about about uh, working definitions. But this is, we're using those definitions to look at the policies, you know, for, um, how can I say this? We should have a, a basic solid group of words that we're looking for that, that, will, that will stick out. And th that's, the working de definitions, I, I understand those, but for, for instance, you know, if I'm tasked with with a particular um, job to look at, um, you know, these policies and procedures, there's only a few things that are going to pop out. You know, I mean, excuse me, like there's only like 50 words that we should be looking for, but we're we're not going to find a whole a whole slew of words, and and I just I just don't want to get bottled down by, you know, 
every time we do one of these, are we going to be keep adding more to the definitions? Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I don't think, I, I think it's more, more fluid and more solid than fluid, I should say. I agree. I finally figured out the word I was looking for, which is um, so that it eliminates the argument for semantics. So if someone were to say, well, this isn't how I define it. Like in research, if you call it working definitions, it's essentially, this is, these are the definitions that we are working by. Mm -hmm. So because it, there might be differing opinions, it just eliminates that, like the semantics part of things. That was what I was thinking. And normally, normally that's where you put a tal italicize, you know, um, you put that in there and you, 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 you put that blanketed statement, you know, that, you know, <laughs> so, okay. So does anybody um, he, um, hear what Keila's saying and think that that could be something that we should put there that it says work in definitions? Um, we can certainly um, vote on that if that's the case. I, I, I don't have an issue with it being um, that way, but it, can, it certainly can be. Um, but I wanna make sure we're all in agreement and uh, Again, this is just a template and a working work in one, just like the definitions would be working. So that's actually a common um, uh, that's a, you know exercise in legislative reports when they start getting pretty long. In the back of the report, they have a whole list of working definitions that you can refer to a lot of times. So it's 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 a common thing to do. So working in this sense means the definitions we are working from, not that they are fluid, that they are they are temporary. Yeah, it's yeah, but if they're also the if they're um if they're often cited or used in the report, you know, in our report or in our observations, mm -hmm. then you know, if people have any kind of questions about it, they just flip to the back of the yeah. uh, report and they look up the <clears throat> definition. Mm -hmm. Is the um, is what we're preparing going to be digital? I'm sure it, it's some. I'm sure it'll be online. I would think. I mean, so we could make it a link. You know, we could reason, link them. Yeah. The reason I'm asking is because, following from what Kim said, um, that the that the term when it comes up in in the part above what we're looking at now could be hyperlinked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we should decide if we want to do that, if we just want to have them PDFs or something. I, but, and, and we might not have a lot of a large lists of working definitions either. Right. I'll just also add, um, one of the things I did is I went through the personnel code handbook again um, in light of everything that Rafine has been doing to kind of see like what were what were my lenses, what things was, uh, you know, either in terms of terms or concepts or whatever, what were those um, for me? And um, and that's sort of what I hear Rafina wanting us to have is sort of like a, a shared set of lenses that we're using when we're, when we're we know, reading policies, when we're analyzing policies, um, so that there's some consistency there in terms of what it is we're actually looking for. And, and, and something may come up where we realize like, oh, this actually is in some other category. Um, but, you know, I mean, that just may happen, but I like the idea of being clear about what lenses we're using. Thank you, Paul. Would anybody else just, would it, does anybody else have any um, thoughts on, on this or? So um, I think this is a great template to start with, uh, Dira Chair. Um, so I'm just thinking about like uh, lenses. So everybody can have different lenses, right? How they they they, they look at things. Um, 
So I don't know how do you wanna because uh, you know I I might interpret it interpret it as something different as I don't know as someone else might. Um, I'm just thinking about it, like how to how to put that in in, in paper. Um, I think that's a great question, Daraj. Me too. Uh, Jim, did you want to say something? I'm sorry, Paul, if I interrupted no, you. No, no, we're good. I, I just appreciate it. I, I thought Rafina, in a pretty concise way, laid out a perspective, though, which to me seemed to be two primary lenses, one about harm, what, 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 what things are being done that create harm, and the other one is about how could more equity be created. And I think that gives us some expansiveness to say, like in that personnel, document, you know, there's just overt discriminatory phrases. I mean, it's pretty in your face, but there could be other things which aren't overtly discriminatory that don't sound that bad, but we could still change the town to make it more equitable, or there could be, you know, ways in which uh, there's exclusion that's not as visible. And and so I, so I like the expansiveness of the, the lens that's, that's, that, that we're working with here. Thanks, Jim, for the explanation. That's wonderful. <laughs> and and uh, just again, sort of picking this up. Um, so, for example, like when I was going through the the code, the handbook, I would see something, for example, that I thought was um, harmful language impacting LGBTQ people. And that may just be a lens that's like sharper on my eyes than somebody else's. Um, and so that's kind of what I hear Daraj saying is that all of us will bring that, you know, bring our experience to bear on what we're reading and what we're taking in. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm sort of hearing Jim in support of Rafina saying, as long as those, those primary categories are broad and meaningful, then particulars will all fit into those. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good point. It's funny you said that, Paul. When I sat um, on this, um, uh, sat in with when um, um, my ex coworker was was doing this, um, we sat at a round table. And one of the unique things is what we're doing now. We had people from all different walks of life, um, you know, race, color, creed, you like, know, just like Valerie you know, had put together with, um, with the, the um, by the town council was tasked with, it was interesting because each one of them brought a different perspective on things. And again, you know, somebody may not be sensitive to, you know, hey, look at those, you know, those guys, you know, and how they are and everything, you know, but yet somebody's like, oh, I'm, I'm offended by, you know, how that language is and everything. But, you know, again, with the, with the different lenses, goggles, you know, that we all have, I think, I think we have a great group of people that I think nothing's going to get past us. Nothing's <laughs> <laughs> if you're not wearing glasses now, you'll be wearing glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I, I, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to that. So with that said, so can we get back to where we have with the definitions? Um, so um, the first thing you know, that uh, Keila brought up was putting down that the definitions should be work, put the title working. Is that something that uh, Melanie and Keila that we, we know we need to agree upon? I, I just think we need agreement. Um, so I'm, I'm looking for that. I just want to make sure we everybody has heard, but um, if we need to vote on it, we, we certainly um, uh, should vote on that. I, did, did everybody that wanted to speak on that were they able to speak? And then we can just take a vote on leaving it the way it is and working with what we've got and seeing how it goes. Either way is fine with me. Okay. Me too. Uh, well, I, would also, I would also be fine with something like defining terms because I think that implicitly says within this document, this is how we are using, <laughs> this is the word we're using and this is what we mean by it. You know, um, and that way we're not constantly revisiting it and redefining it, but. <clears throat> if there's nervousness about definitions feeling too concrete. Valerie, did you want to say something? 
Well, I, I think it's a good idea. It just says working definition. So that way anybody looking at it knows that that's what we're working with in, um, in going through all of these um, policies. So um, I think that's important that we have our definitions that we're working with. I think it's pretty easy just to put working definitions and, and have them at the back of the document. Kind of like what Rafina has it now. It makes sense. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Um, um, I'll add something, um, which is a point I heard Rafina make. And um, in my brain at the moment, and I'm I'm not really I'm not recommending what I'm about to say. I just I just want to make the, the observation. Um, that it's sort of like whether it says definitions working definitions or whatever it's kind of like there's an asterisk that is inclusive that's saying um that sort of gets also to keela's point which is these are the terms we're using and applying you know to this work um you know I, again, this is more just like saying this now more, I think more to get feedback and in terms of how much of this is even, <laughs> you know, how much of it becomes just um, pedantic, but like, these are the terms we're using, you know, Webster's Dictionary and, and you know, uh, NBC might use these terms a little bit differently. This is how we're using them. This is why we're using them, you know, et cetera. And, and Kim, I just wanted to ask again, so are you saying there is kind of a standard terminology for things like this? Uh, it, it, it's, it's a standard process. I mean, that's, um, it's sort of like, a, a lot of times like when there's fairly large legislative reports, like I, I select a special committee is is tasked to, to do, you know, to look into a, a specific issue. And, you know, it, it, it turned, they submit a report and in the back there are, a, is a glossary or, you know, a, an area of all commonly used terms. And, um, and I think because the legislative analysts a lot of times put these reports together and they, a lot of these analysts are, some of them are attorneys some of them are, they've been doing it for years and years and that's just sort of what they do, you know? It's not written in stone, I don't think, but um, it, it's very helpful. I mean, I know I've gone, I've flipped back there a few times to just double check, check a meeting on something, you know, that I wasn't too familiar with or something. Did I answer your question? Yeah, thanks, <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks. But again, I don't know how how detailed how how you know if it, it will if, it, if it, it's really needed you know. But we might find that it might be. But um, you know, it all depends on how many terms. I just don't think that I don't know if we need a lot of definitions. Maybe I would just think like a page or something that might be used. But some of these reports they went on for a few pages. Um, Again, they are long reports. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. All right, so I, I think we should um, vote on this, unless somebody else wants to say something. All right, so Rachel or Valerie, I just have a quick question. Do mm -hmm. I need to say, um, that I want, that I'm agreeing to something and then we're going to take a vote on it or is Keila, and she's the one who, um, wants to do the work in definition, she'll, she'll put in a motion then I, I don't even know. So I guess I'm saying if we're going to vote, um, who says what, or is just Rachel just going to take a vote on this Valerie? You can make it a formal vote if you want to, um, then somebody would make a motion to uh, either leave it the way it is or change it, or you can do it informally. So. Um, Thanks. Okay, thank you. That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay, so so um, I'm motioning to um, have it say, 
um, work in definitions. And do I have a second for that? Second. Oh, was that Kim? Okay, that's Kim. All right, and Rachel, can you do the vote for us? Yeah, uh, Rafina. Yes. Uh, Kim. Yes. Jim. Yes. Keila. Yes. Melanie. Yes. Paul. Yes. Diraj. Yes. Okay. Well, unanimously approved. Rafina, this is fantastic. I, I actually, I'm actually excited to get started now. I mean, it, I don't know. I, I'm just saying, it, great job. And I'm really excited to just get started with this template and just, uh, I'm ready to tackle each one, but you know, baby steps one at a time. But thank you for all your hard work for doing this. Welcome. I okay. see you. It's changed. No, <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank it's you. Weird. Thank you, Keila. Okay. Number five, we're moving right along, aren't we? Um, number five is a, a discussion of resources shared by committee members relevant to policy review. And I must be honest that number five, even reading it today on the agenda, I was, I, I'm still just like, I'm not quite sure what we're doing here. Um, it, but Keila, I know you did the other meeting last time, so um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm curious to dive into this and see what our discussion is or what we were talking about regarding this last time, so. I had the same, I was wondering the same thing, so I thought maybe I missed an email, but I'm wondering, or Rachel, can you explain yeah, so Paul had mentioned that, um, and the, the fact that we seem to be a, a very document heavy committee, um, a lot of people share a lot of documents. So I was trying to come up with a way, I thought, uh, um, just to refer back to some of the items that have been shared if people wanted to discuss any of the items um, specifically, because I know Keila, you had um, uploaded a whole folder of, of different resources and just so that those things didn't get lost. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just threw that on the agenda as I was going through the minutes as, cause there had been some reference back to those. Um, so I, you know, it, it's something that we can talk about for the future. If you like, I'm just trying, I was trying to, it's a little bit of a challenge to wrestle with all of the various, um, resources and links and documents that get shared and trying to figure out how to make those part of the public record and which ones need to be part of the public record. So that, um, you know, we can continue to talk about, um, you know, moving forward with the, the different policies. I just added that as, as a, a point that, you know, just to find a way to kind of make sure we don't lose track of things that people share um, that are relevant to the work that we're doing. Uh, so that was that was the only uh, my my attempt to just sort of get something in there so that we we don't you know things don't just keep getting buried. Um, and I don't know if Paul did you want to say anything on that? Um, Paul had raised to me just the the worry that we were losing track of some of our um, just the great resources that everybody's come up with and and wanting to honor that people had done the work to find them and find a way to um, make sure that if there are things that are relevant to what we're addressing that that those get highlighted and and then added um, from my perspective just added so that they're part of the public record if they are something that we are um, using and to inform our discussions and and decision making. Yeah, I'll, I'll just quickly add that uh, it was when I was um, reviewing the uh, documents that Keila had pulled together from different towns or cities, you know, sort of like how they've done this, like, so we're not reinventing the wheel. And it's like, okay, so now they're all there. But kind of like you were just saying, Rachel, do they just end up being at the bottom of on the table with a bunch of other things <laughs> piled on top of them? You know, I just want to make sure we're both, um, you know, 
recognizing the work that Kila or anybody else does, but also, you know, making use of the things that have been discovered. Valerie. I, I have a suggestion. Because we do have a lot of documents and it, it is um, uh, tough, Susanna, to connect everything to our agenda when we might not be using it on at our meeting. Mm -hmm. What I was thinking is if it's something that, let's say, Keila wants to bring up at the next meeting, then that would be put on the agenda or she'd contact Rachel, I'd like this on the agenda as new business. And then you would attach those documents so that we could look at it going, oh, okay, this is on the agenda. These are the documents that, that go with it. Or if it's something um, like all that work that Jim did um, and Jim wants to talk about it at the next meeting and he tells us tonight, oh, let's talk about this at the next meeting, then those documents um, would be attached to our agenda. So we'd know, oh, okay, we're gonna be discussing these documents that Jim put into his paper. I think that way um, it doesn't get lost mm -hmm. so much if mm -hmm. one of us brings it up and says, oh, let's, let's talk about that and let's attach it to the agenda. And that way, when we have participants or um, attendees or people coming back and watching these videos, they can go right to the agenda, pull up the document and look at what we're discussing. What, what do you think about doing something like that? I'm, I'm in favor of that. And now, right, Paul's already got his thumb up. Um, mm -hmm. I'm in favor of that because um, now once Rachel said what number five was about, now I remember. I'm like, yes, because we needed to discuss this. Um, I am guilty of not being able to read these things and feeling so bad about them. And I know people have researched or looked at things and, um, if we don't discuss them all together, um, somehow these are getting lost. I've not even seen Keila. If you're saying that Keila put in something about how other towns are doing it, I trust I have not seen it. So I'm not sure if it's getting lost in the mix or um, I'm just so busy, but I really would love to not miss out on these things. And I do think they need to be discussed here um, without, with us before we even put them out there to anybody else. Um, so I, I happen to agree that would really, uh, mm -hmm. it, it helped me feel better. Like I'm learning as much as I can too and that we're all talking about these things. I'm, I'm not good with Google or where all these things are going and I just get them, they get lost in the mix for me. So for, I, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say Rachel, it's just that I don't think we're gonna have enough time to discuss every single document that everybody's putting in there. We might but there's probably gonna be documents that we're gonna read on our own just, just because of the amount of time um, that we have. Like tonight, uh, because it was on the agenda to look at this document that Rafina put together, the documents attached, we're looking at it, it makes it really easy. Um, so I think that if it's something where someone's going to discuss that topic and maybe the topic is let's review what other towns are doing and read those documents, then it would, we'd have it attached right there into the mm -hmm. agenda. There's gonna be awesome. ones that, there's just no way we can attach everything to the agenda, I, I would think, so. So just from a housekeeping standpoint, the agenda has to be posted a week before the meeting, which is a little challenging that we are meeting every other week. Um, so I, I'm just trying to figure out just from, from a man managing all the information standpoint, making sure it's out there. If we attach those documents to the agenda, then should I put out a call, say, um, like the day before it needs to get posted for anything that anyone wants to include on the agenda and the documents to be attached? Is that enough time or how? Like what would work for you all if we're if we're gonna say okay, um, say uh, Paul comes up with a document that um, applies to something that we want to discuss or that should be on the agenda as new business, then that would get sent to me 
and then I would then add it to the agenda or should it go to the chairs and then the chairs give it to me or? Well, that's what I was gonna say. I, I, I think it should go to uh, Keela and I, and then we could decide, sorry, Keela. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I guess I'm just trying to figure out the timeline on that, like, um, in would terms of... Would it be possible to have, similar to new business, just an open agenda time period? So during the meeting, we have, we carve out 20 minutes for anyone who wants to speak about something that they put on, you know, loaded up into Google. And so then it would take that off of your plate in terms of us telling you ahead of time so it would have to be attached it would feel like new business so the prep behind it wouldn't have to happen in the same way could that be possible that we're talking about it like in a meeting and mm -hmm. then it would get discussed in the next one is that what you're saying keila like uh, similar to new business just open agenda so if you know say if I think of something that yesterday and then today want to bring it up, just have, you know, 15 minute open agenda so that we can discuss anything we use it or we don't use it. But then that responsibility of a week prior and, you know, having the information attached, it just feels like a lot of a lot on your plate, Rachel. So I'm thinking of how that could be easier. Yeah, I guess I, I, that's sort of what I was thinking was that if it was something that we did end up discussing at a meeting, then it would be attached with the minutes and posted rather than being posted in the agenda. Maybe that makes a little more sense in terms of the way people are more likely to work rather than having to do this a week beforehand and have everything out there. And then um, maybe that works. Maybe that's a better, a better approach in terms of the way things work that if if there are specific um and maybe because it has been challenging for me to figure out because i feel like i've flooded susanna the web webmaster with like everything that's been shared and and she throws it up there but there's really not an organization to it so i'm i mean and it's hard for her to figure out where things go so um so it probably makes more sense that if it if we do discuss it um, during that open or new business, it could even just go under new business, I would think. I don't know exactly, but I guess we could make it what we want. But as long as it gets, if it's something that gets discussed, then the document gets included with the minutes when I do the minutes for that particular meeting. Maybe that is a better approach. Um, because I suppose if someone has found an article and shared it, that or found an article that seems relevant when we are discussing that during the meeting, we can, you know, the, the person who, who shared the article could discuss the points of that article and how it relates. And then we can then have access to that article and then include it with the minutes. Maybe that's a better approach. Um, I don't know. I like the idea of documents being introduced and summarized. Um, for the viewer also, um, that they just have an idea of like, they don't literally have to like click on every single thing, but they'll know like at some point in the meeting that they're going to get a sense of what's there. I also am thinking about the, uh, the Facebook group, the CDC uh, Cape Diversity Coalition Facebook group, and we have uh, topic categories. And so this would be in terms of how the material is held when it's not linked to a particular meeting mm -hmm. and that perhaps there's like three or four categories that stuff goes in. So for mm -hmm. example, we have like anti-racist resources as a category and any posts that, you know, have videos or article links or, or whatever has that tag. And so somebody can just click on that tag and see all of those things. They don't have to scroll forever through the Facebook page to see what else might be there. So uh, I'm thinking about that as a separate way of organizing things mm -hmm. beyond particular meetings. I like that. Also, the um, 
the opportunity to summarize for the person who found the article or who wants to share the resource then takes the burden off of everybody for to read it in advance. It can get summarized and then the, the document is available if you want to go back and read through everything. Mm -hmm. it's, it is a lot for uh, uh, everyone to, a, lot, a big expectation for everyone to um, read everything. So having the, um, the sharer do the summary then and introduce the, 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 um, the resource then maybe makes it more um, uh, easier for, the, for everybody to take in that information and, and pursue it if, if need be. And I think it also um, distinguishes something from, you know, here's something that I hope everyone reads and finds as a valuable resource to use within the group versus FYI as right, you know, right. sharing yeah. things sometimes just because it's interesting versus sharing it so then the onus is on the person who is presenting or who shares the material to mm -hmm. express their intention with by either bringing it up at a meeting and summarizing it or leaving it be and that would basically mean that it was just a reference. Right, that's a great distinct, distinction, whether it moves the work of the committee forward or mm -hmm. it's an FYI, um, you know, is, yeah, so that's that's a good point. So, so, so it seems like what we're talking about in a sense is that we're curating these documents that we have submitted and saying, here's the salient point that relates to, for example, as we look at our town policies, let's look at how other towns have done this thing and Keela could present about some of the significant points that she's discovered and then we could read more. I think we've we've struggled to adapt. I, I'll speak for myself. I think initially it was almost like as if we were going to meet every weekend and spend hours and hours together, you know, like which is probably the ideal way to do this really, but it's like we're having to modify that to, you know, meeting for a couple hours every two weeks and it's like how do you how do you even di dive into this stuff with those constraints? Mm -hmm. And I think that that's this is the struggle. And I think maybe one way to do that is to say we we do sort of curate our contributions and then try to highlight them for the group. That seems like a good strategy. I agree. So we might need two motions on this, right? About what we're gonna do with all that good stuff. And then the best part is that, you know, Valerie brought up last time, um, an action step to bring to the town council about uh, a website that would help with all this stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But for now, we need to do something differently. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking, for example, I also did a big document dump, you know, and but it was the day before a meeting, I think, and I'd just been behind and trying to get it out. And so a lot of it had to do with police stuff. So I think it becomes salient as we talk about the police department, but maybe then I could say, I'd like to put that on the agenda. I'd like to refer to some, you know, documents mm -hmm. and so forth. And th that way it wouldn't be so overwhelming. Yeah, I think like, for example, when I do the minutes for this meeting, I would then obviously include uh, Rafina's framework because we've discussed that and we've, we've yep. viewed it. So it could be a similar sort of model with going forward that we, things that we discuss and look at um, during the meeting then become part of the, the, the minutes or attached to the right. minutes as, and, and, and Valerie's point and what you just said, Jim too, if, if there's something that you wanna talk about in it, like if we know we're gonna be discussing police and you have something that you came upon about police policies that could then go attached to the agenda. So it could go, we could do both both mm -hmm. methods for this. All right, so do we need to do a, get some agreement on that or is it just gonna be stated that that's what we're going to do? Everybody, should we agree upon that? I lost my pin. <laughs> I have some notes about what was just said. And so, uh, so I'm just gonna say these two parts cause I, I might be missing a piece of this whole part of the conversation. So I have curating the documents um, to highlight and summarize them for the meeting or workshop, as well as the audience. Mm -hmm. And 
attaching working documents and meeting specific documents to the minutes after the meeting or workshop. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the other alternative in the case of knowing in advance, say we're gonna address a particular policy, if there's a particular document that speaks to that, that one of us has found, then that could be attached to the agenda as part of it. Um, so I guess the, the salient point would be either <laughs> we, if there's something particularly relevant to an agenda item that that gets um, identified um, or alerted, the chairs get alerted to that fact. And then that goes to me so that I can attach it um, when I send out the, the notice for the agenda. Or when I'm doing the minutes, anything that is highlighted and discussed at the meeting is relevant to the work that we're doing gets attached to the minutes. But that every document that gets shared just as an FYI doesn't, doesn't necessarily, doesn't need to be something that I then um, send for being posted to the website. Only the things that we're going to discuss as part of the agenda or that we discuss in a meeting get then get attached to the minutes. So that kind of eliminates that document dump that um, uh, the massive amount of documents that we, we share sure. on the town website. And I think that's in the spirit of what the intention is, is that you know, the work of the committee is done in the public eye. But if it's just FYI, oh, here's a interesting, you know, this is cool or this is interesting, but it's not something that is moving our work forward or that we're working on in, in a meeting. It's not something that has to be posted on the town website. Does that seem right, Valerie? That, that sounds good. I think okay. that, um, a good policy. Well, I'd like to set a motion to um, to do that new policy and to have that um, as our framework going forward that we would um, do those things that Rachel uh, described and that we are hopefully all agreeing on. Is there a second for that? Second. All right, I'll do a roll call vote, Rafina. Yes. Val, uh, not Valerie. <laughs> Kim. Yes. Jim. Yes. Keila. Yes. Melanie. Yes. Paul. Yes. Uh, Diraj. Yes. All right. I have unanimously approved. Okay. Thank All you. Right, so uh, next thing on our agenda is next steps um, and then new business. Uh, they're sort of the same, but um, you know, when I when I think of next steps, I, I, I think of, you know, what needs to happen, um, well, next. <laughs> uh, and one of those is uh, just getting our charge ready, of course. Um, I, I don't think that's gonna be too difficult. Um, that's just wording and, and you know what our mission is and um, bringing that to uh, the town council. Uh, we already talked about doing a presentation to them, uh, um, Tila and I, and then all of us being there, I believe that was for February. Don't quote me on this, I'd have to find yep. it. <laughs> February 8th, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, February 8th at yeah. 7 o'clock. Um, see, my memory is good. Um, and uh, well, st starting with our first policy, which is going to be personnel. So um, like I said, I, I, I'm very excited. So I, I don't know if we want to um, go into too, too much detail, but I'd love to just talk about um, what our next steps are and making sure we're all understanding that. Uh, and going forward. And I think we have a clear understanding. Uh, thanks to Val, if anybody, you know, did not under understand Valerie's stating that, you know, this is for the whole year, um, that it's not um, just the three months and then we just hope, you know, go into the town council that we can continue on. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's a good time for open discussions uh, about those things and how we're gonna move forward. 
and being on um, the same page about that. So I'm opening up that for discussion. Next steps, Valerie. Well, I, I was thinking about that earlier about um, the committee charge. In fact, we had a town council meeting, a uh, workshop meeting last night and the council asked me about that. And I said that they'd be hearing from us soon. So what if we set our next, um, just a thought, our next workshop to figure out what our draft um, standing committee charge is going to be. You know, so that we can all talk about what it is, how, what we want that charge to look like for a standing committee. Do we think we need a standing committee? If so, what would the charge be? And then if we put together a charge, we'll have it ready for that February 8th meeting. So I wanted to run that by you guys, see what you thought. I'm a little bit perplexed um, because it, I guess I, I understood um, that the ad hoc committee would be tasked with certain things and the ad hoc committee would also be empowered to, you know, create its own list of to do's in, in the time that it exists and that through that work, other areas of concern would surface. And in some sense, you know, ongoing, ongoing work uh, of what's been done in this year would occur. But then, you know, again, we'd be, un we'd be unearthing certain things that definitely need focused work. And so the, the, um, the official ongoing committee would be tasked with that as well as whatever they, you know, decide is important. So Valerie, are you saying, I guess I'm, I'm confused about like, what are we saying needs to be done if we haven't sort of gotten there yet, you know? Yeah. Well, just like, um, have the town council put together a charge for this committee, for this ad hoc committee. They're asking us, what do, what do we think a charge for a standing committee would be? It might be the same charge that, that we have, or it might be a little bit different. Um, so they wanted us to have a draft charge. Right, which could be maybe you know, four sentences, uh, you know, a paragraph, two sentences. It's really just going to say um, in our own words, not what the town council suggested, what they think we're gonna be doing right here, but what we're going to be doing. Um, I hope that makes sense, Paul. Yes, totally, 100%, I agree with you. Yeah, that, I think that's right on because Town Council wants the committee to come up with the charge rather than them to come up with the charge. But like you said, it's a draft. It doesn't have to be something that this is set in stone. It could change and develop, but at least we get them mm -hmm. a draft of what we see that um, charge being for a standing committee. Would it make any sense for us then to play around with language before the next meeting to bring various lang various sort of iterations of some language? That's why I was saying maybe we want to do that in our in a next workshop. Um, if we set up our, our workshop in January, maybe we want to take that day as our time to brainstorm it and kick around language and kind of figure mm -hmm. figure it out. And maybe we it gives us time the next few weeks or the next month to kind of think about it anyway um, or look at other committees, what have they've been, what their charge looks like, and then we can kick it around at our workshop. Yep, so what we could do is just decide um, if everybody thinks January 13th, uh, that Wednesday meeting might be a good day for a workshop. Um, that gives us a little time even to get more done. And then, you know, February, the beginning of February, we're gonna speak to the town council. So would that be a good day? 
for everybody? Sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so January 13th, uh, 2021 at 645, we're going to make that a workshop. Okay. So are we thinking that um, all of us individually or whoever is interested will sort of bring drafts or maybe, or maybe, you know, send the chairs um, you know, that as it exists in other committees. And then we sort of pull all that stuff together at the workshop, or do we just sort of start at the workshop? No, I think we should be, I think we should be planning ahead. You know, in my mind, I'm being honest, I've already kind of got the charge wrote down. Um, <laughs> but, you know, nice. when we get to that, we can, um, all talk about what we think the charge is or mm -hmm. write it down or, um, but, you know, if we can start thinking about it now, uh, the better. So by that time that comes, I actually think this might be one of our easiest things we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if we all start writing it down or maybe having an idea of a few sentences or things that are important that we want to say um, to bring that to town council, that'd be fantastic mm -hmm. and appreciated. I would also make a vote, Keila, I don't want to volunteer you for something you don't want to do, but if at our next meeting at the end of December, you might present about what other towns have done, you know, which might be about cautionary tales, it might be about successes. I think that would also help just to orient us as we prepare to write this up, you know, to sort of have a wider context. I can surely do that. And that goes for anybody. So if anybody uh, knows about uh, what's going on with other towns, uh, like myself, or if you're involved in any other task force or anything, um, you know, bring that bring that up, and write that down, or you know, mention that to us so we can know what other towns are doing. That yeah. is one that is going to be a part of our next our new business is definitely um, if anybody wants to talk about that because I do have some news to share so yeah so rachel can we add that to the agenda and then yeah i was just gonna say should i add that to the agenda okay so we will look at um what other towns have done uh people can bring their information and, and keila's folder of, of materials could be attached to the agenda then too for just so it's highlighted so we can see it sure Okay. Got it, Rachel. I feel so yeah, bad. I got it. <laughs> oh, no, right. no, 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 it's fine. <laughs> I hope you know what's that called? That short, is it shorthand? Oh, I don't, but I, <laughs> I can read my, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll rush you through a stenography course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I, what was the other thing? It was, all right, it was, there was something else with next step that I mentioned, but I forgot it already. Um, brainstorming the language for the, for the policy like, review. Oh, getting the charge ready and uh, starting the personnel policy. Yes. Um, so, you know, I already know that we're already in agreement uh, with that, that that's going to be our, our first um, thing that we're going to, uh, tackle is um, personnel. I, I just wasn't sure. Did we vote on that? So we're we were in agreement, Rachel. That we were everybody. I think okay. so. In the last, I think it was in the last minutes from the last time. I looked. I didn't see it, but it just seemed know. like we did. Yeah, I'm not sure if we voted on it or if we just decided that was the one we were going to tackle first. Um, okay. I so, don't think well, it was. We had a motion to include all the town departments identified in our framework going forward, but we did not vote that personnel would be the first one. I think we just thought that would be, since we had already started to tackle it, I had noted that we that was one we would 
an obvious one to start with, I think. Me too. So I thought maybe we could do a vote or just uh, have that in agreement and understood that that's the mm -hmm. first one we're going to start with so we can start start with it. I take that as a motion and second it. Okay. Yeah, my right. All right, so Melanie made the motion, Paul seconded it. Uh, okay, so roll call vote. Um, Rafina. Yes. Uh, Kim. Jim. Yes. Keila. Yes. Melanie. Yes. Paul. Yes. Diraj. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, so before moving on to new well, business. Can, I, can I, would, I just ask, should yes. I include that as an agenda item then on the for the December 30th meeting that we are gonna start to look at the personnel policy applying Rafina's framework? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. perfect. Got it. Okay. All right, before moving to new business, I just wanna make sure that um, my kids want my attention. <laughs> no, I don't, but thank you though. Um, before moving on to new business, I was wondering um, with those things that we discussed for next steps, if anybody still had any questions about that or are we all set? Valerie? Uh, you know, we had talked a little bit about trainings and things, and I wanted to mention to you that I talked to our town manager, Matt Sturgis, about trainings that the town, I know the police department does certain trainings, and I, I haven't talked to um, Chief Fenton yet, but I talked to Matt, and every year they have an annual training, and probably, um, Rachel, you've done that annual training mm -hmm. every year. I think it's in June um, and it's, it's sexual harassment and that bias training, right? Oh, are you talking about the townwide training or the, um, cause there's on the staff of, day of the staff appreciation picnic, right. there's the, the morning is spent with the townwide training. Is that, that might be what yeah. you're referring to? Yeah. That training. And so, um, I just mentioned to him, you know, I asked him, do they do any other trainings? And that's the one that they do every year. But we've mm -hmm. been doing, um, taking a lot of classes through um, Maine Municipal Association and different bias training, racial equity, a lot of different um, classes that aren't required. So um, the town manager, there's sometimes different um, town counselors will do it. Uh, the police chief, there's different people that will sign up for it, but it's not required. So I was thinking that that's something we may want to think about as a, a, a next step and maybe we set it up as um, a workshop where we brainstorm and talk about trainings. Do we think they need trainings? Because they have the annual training every year in June. And he said he thought it'd be a really good idea to add um, you know, we could do something with racial bias, uh, anything like that, um, added to the sexual harassment training to where it's something they do every year for all town employees. But if we're, and we don't have to <laughs> do it right away to where they do it in June, but I was thinking it would be really nice if we started the ball rolling sooner so they could get that set up to where we give them that suggestion. I don't know that it would have to go through town council. It could be something that we suggest to town council, suggest to um, the town manager. But I was thinking that um, it'd be good for us to all talk about it and think uh -huh. about different types of trainings that might be really valuable for our town municipal employees. So Is that something that we might have time to put on our, our workshop? Um, for can't find it. For January thirteenth. Um, 
since sure. we, might, we might, you know, we have our charge, we could talk about training because I do remember Valerie, it, it is one of the things that I won't forget where you said, I think you and Jeremy were the only ones maybe that did um, some training um, and that, it, you know, it's not required. That's something you guys did on your own. Um, so that was obviously going to be a big, excuse me, factor in uh, making that a priority that, you know, these things are, should be a requirement um, that that be part of our action that we're requiring um, more training. Yeah. I, I would also say, I think in my, my sort of document dump thing, I, I started looking a little bit into sort of like the, the literature, what, what sort of training seems effective, what seems not enough. Um, what 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 are the effects of compulsory training? Um, are there other ways of doing training that might be more effective? Because I think that would be useful for us to critically examine if we're going to say do this to, to to say no, really do this. You know, this is this this this, and that will take some time. But I think that would be better than just checking a box, you know, and saying do bias training or something. Under this, in the stack of documents yes. <laughs> that exist, I had um, I had researched bias training and its effectiveness, effectiveness, and just sort of pull. I had links and I pulled passages from each link about what the assessment, what the um, analysis was of that. So here's a, here again when we come to the agenda. I think if we could have that, if we could like come back to this stuff and then summarize it, that'd be great. Yep. So I'll add that as a an agenda item for the January 13th workshop. Great. And we can bring resources to that. Okay. So if there, when we get to that point, if there are specific ones that you want, so is that a, a an opportunity to include documents with the agenda, or do we want to just wait and see what we discuss and include them with the minutes on that particular one? It's a ways away because we have two meetings before then, but just uh, I guess I I like consistent. I don't know. <laughs> you know, maybe that we're just consistent yeah. with that, no matter what we're doing. So I would say, yeah. you know, towards the end, so you bring it to. What we're discussing and then it, it comes those documents would go along afterwards attached okay okay but that's just, good. that's just me thinking it i don't know about anybody else <laughs> well i would yeah i would worry about flooding the zone if we you know come up with 30 articles about bias training like to put those all on the town website seems kind of like overkill you know if we're, if we're not if, yeah. if we're not even sure what what are the merits of these different articles we're just right. beginning to so look at ourselves. Okay, that's good. That doesn't that way it doesn't bog down the um, the agenda. Like getting the agenda over there, waiting for documents to come. We can just deal with them at the meeting and then post them after. Okay. Sounds great. All right. So our next uh, thing on the agenda is number seven, which is new business. Does anybody got any? I got some, but does anybody else got anything? <laughs> you look so excited, Melanie. We can't wait to hear. <laughs> <you. laughs> um, all right. Well, um, so I've been sitting in on the DEI task force for the school board here, um, which has been. Uh, fantastic, tiring, but very fantastic. Um, you know, just trying to see what they're doing, um, you know, what they're working with, what they're trying to do. Um, that is not on the discussion, <laughs> what I'm gonna tell you about, but it's just something maybe in the future. Uh, because, you know, I, I think just knowing what they're doing, them knowing what we're doing uh, really helps. Um, but um, for me, I wanted to talk about uh, just people that reach out to me um, from other communities and just want to, you know, know, you know, what we're doing, um, like Kila, uh, you know, I can talk more about that in our next meeting. But one of the things that is, is, is happening is um, 
some other communities, uh, mainly Freeport, uh, they, they have their own little thing that they're doing um, up there. And I've been working with them. And what they're trying to do is um, they're trying to do a 21 day challenge. Uh, and they wanna do that, you know, right around um, Martin Luther King Jr. around that week, uh, civil rights week. And um, I'm just, I'm pretty excited about this. It does not mean that, and they, they want other towns to, you know, join in, of course. So they, they want this to be something that um, all people uh, can do. And it's just really just 21 days on a calendar of being mindful about um, every day doing something, whether you're reading an article, uh, whether you're, um, I, I, I wish I, I will send it to you, Rachel, so you can, um, so we can discuss this, but it, okay. it really is detailed every day that you are doing something um, that, you know, um, anti-racism, um, education, um, and, and, you know, I can go on and on, but it is, it is powerful. And whether we adopt the 21 day challenge or, um, do something on our own, whether it's a seven day challenge, a 14 day challenge. In my mind, 21 days does seem like a long time, even though I, I do love it. Uh, it's very uh, bold. I, I think it might be too bold for uh, such short notice, uh, but but I, I do think we should, in our own community, try to do something like this. Um, and for us, we can do it, of course, around uh, Martin Luther King junior week, we can do it during Black History Week. Um, but it's, I, I think we can put our own spin on this and branch it out to um, everything, whether it's, whether it's gays, whether it's racism, whether it's um, transgender, I'm just saying no matter what it is that, you know, we could start educating and, and getting the town involved a little more and doing something um, and, and make the town part of this, the library part of this, the community services part of this and uh, getting it out to the Cape Courier. So it's just something to think about. Mm. Um, and again, it does not have to be, I don't know if we can get this done or, maybe we could lower it to a 14 day challenge or a seven day one um, and figure out maybe when we would want to do something like this or join these other towns that are doing it. Rachel, yes, Valerie, is, yes. Is there is there a significance to the 21 days? Do you know, like was that no, just- No, right? no. Oh, okay. I, I just think maybe t is 21 days challenge like a big thing, Keela? I think it's just, I don't know where the 21 came up with, but the Portland Chamber did a 21 day, my work, United Way of Greater Portland, we did 21 days. I've seen lots of these 21 day challenges. I don't know why it's 21 days, but they're, but it seems to I'm, be 21 days. For some I wonder reason. if it has something to do with um, habit psychology, because it's, I've read a lot of books about habits and, and it seems like you've got to do something for a certain amount of time in a row in order for it to become ingrained. So maybe 21 is sort of like the threshold for making it a habit, perhaps. Maybe. Um, That's what I, I was know. thinking, too. Yeah. I, I was thinking that, too. I figured Jim would... Uh... Yeah, would tell us. <laughs> no, I was, I was, I was, I was puzzling over it. <laughs> well, maybe a diet. I think a, th a thousand hours is what I was thinking about in terms of habits, or ten thousand hours, right? That that's to to mastery. There's some. I was curious um, when you said Freeport would want other towns to join in. When are they starting theirs, and how, if we joined in, what would that look like? Yep. So I, I tried to look it up on my phone. Um, they sent it to me. Um, but they are starting right around, um, pretty much it's going to be almost, uh, well, January. <laughs> so it's almost the whole month because it's 21 days. Um, so they were going to start like mid January and, um, uh, go towards the end of January. Uh, they, they want my help in, you know, maybe getting this out more, uh, getting us on board. Um, and, and reaching other towns like South Portland, Gorham, uh, Westbrook, um, and getting, so that's what I wanted to talk about how, you know, we all kind of know some people. So if we know who's doing some stuff in South Portland, 
you know, that I could get them all together and we could maybe start working on this and making this happen. Um, and I am willing to do this. I was just wondering, you know, what you guys, what your take is on this and, um, you know, do we want to do our own spin on this or get involved in what is already planned? Um, but I, I love this idea. I guess what mm -hmm. I'm saying is I really love this idea and, and I think it could get our community involved and, and that's very important to me. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a great idea. I just pulled it up on my phone while we're talking and um, it's kind of funny. I don't know if you can see it, but it has a picture of Portland Headlight on there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> racial, <laughs> racial equity challenge, it's Portland Headlight. It's like, how cool is that? Uh. So, um, uh, this says uh, August 12th to October 9th. So they must- No, can't, can't be that one. Might be this some- Portland. This was Portland's. Okay, so they- Yeah, no, this is- that is too funny. It has our head like, what I'm thinking is that if if it was soon, we have um, town council workshop on January 6th and then a town council meeting on January 11th. Um, someone from the committee could uh, come to the town council meeting and talk about this and present it. And maybe the town council would say, you know, issue a proclamation that we want to do the same thing, or or at least it would be advertised to a larger group of people who tune into the town mm -hmm. meetings. We Isn't can there... time it to appear in the courier too. Yeah, well, that was my concern. Is that is this enough time to really uh, jump on board? And I'm not. I'm not quite sure. It just seems like this is almost the end of December. What were you going to say, Rachel? Well, in terms of the courier, they've already had their they don't have another uh i think that tomorrow is the deadline for the issue that will come out mid-january and i don't think they've published their publication dates yet so that that's a little tough to get into the courier but i was just wondering is there is there like a a component to it like at the library we're doing do good december for kids right now so they've got a like a bingo um for doing doing good things for other people, being kind, where they they kind of, there's activities that they mark off. I mean, that's for kids, but I'm just wondering, is, the, is there like a component to it where people are keeping track of what they're doing? Like, is there a sheet? Is there a calendar? Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah, they, they, they were, yeah, they were gonna go, they're doing most of their stuff through the community services and um, like a link, um, trying to get people in, involved in groups and small groups. And, and here my mind is, you know, I know the, the, the high schools and the middle school, they have um, quickly, they have uh, civil rights teams mm -hmm. and just kind of getting the school involved too, where the mm -hmm. school can do this as well. So the high school can do this, the, the even Pond Cove can do this. So mm -hmm. basically they want, I, I see it, we've discussed, I think it's a good idea to get the kids involved. So, you know, that they would have their own little challenge. Of course, it wouldn't be as detailed as the adults, but you know, this could be something that everybody can do. So the kids could, um, you know, read read a little book about, you know, go to the li go to our library, and you know, or just go online. So something like that, you know. So I just wanted to share that. So I'm I'm still working on that, um, but I was wondering if we could put that. I want to discuss more uh, at our agenda about that, and I'll have the the calendar to show you know what they have uh, planned and we can just get an idea of, do we wanna go with theirs? We can also mm -hmm. um, reach out to Portland Press Herald, the forecaster, uh, if the Cape Courier can't do it, that's fine. But you know, I'm thinking big cause that's how I am. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not big, but I'm thinking big. <laughs> we'll contact the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it says theirs begins January 17th. It's a 21-day tw anti-racism challenge. It sounds pretty cool. Mm. So um, that I don't know if that would be too soon for us to join theirs, but if it is, it'd be great for us to do to do mm -hmm. our own or to mm -hmm. combine with South Portland or something. That's like right. That. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Scarborough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if we can't uh, go with them, we can still mm -hmm. do our own thing and then get it out to other. Uh, communities. So I, I just wanted to share that because I've been that's great nipping away. In yeah. <laughs> awesome. 
Baby well, black could also too. be it's not. could also be something that the library um, helps to coordinate um, with other communities. We just did a community read with Scarborough and South Portland, so perhaps we could kind of, you know, it might be something where the library could could help with that as well. So. Well, you know, talking about going big with this, the library is doing that um, community with the um, with Alaska. You know how yeah. the two libraries oh. in Alaska. Oh right, right. That's a really cool thing. Maybe we do it with the community. We could do it with Alaska. Alaska. We do this twenty-one day um, together with our Alaska community. That's, yeah, our sister, our sister library, Anchorage Public yeah. Library. Yeah, that might be. That's cool. I like that. All Great right, cool. idea. No, we can troubleshoot this during the next. Yeah, definitely. Meeting, Great. Let's, let's right. add that because I, I just see. Um, some really good things that could come to, you know, we talk about surveys, we'll get to that, but I think this is a real tangible way of uh, getting mm -hmm. our community involved and not just ours, but many others if possible. Also raising awareness about the fact that the committee exists and is doing work. It's a good mm -hmm. way to get the, that out into the, the public, so. Yeah. I also think if it's in Rafina's framework, to me, this is the, the part about Inclusion and equity. I mean, this. I mean, I mean, part of it. Part of it. We're looking at policies and addressing harm and and discrimination. But part of it is also, how do we suggest Kate is interested in this the, the, these matters and cares and is engaged? And I think that'd be great. Mm -hmm. All right. Did anybody else have any um, things that they wanted to talk about or um, new business or anything on their minds, Valerie? Well, along that line, and I, I think I mentioned this once before, but it made me think about it now as we were talking about um, this challenge. I really think um, toward inclusion is looking at having a sister city. I think that's something that um, our committee could look at and maybe it's further on down the line, but really if we think about um, inclusion and equity and creating um, a sister city that uh, it could be somewhere in the United States, it could be somewhere in the world, mm -hmm. something just to kick around the idea of doing something like that. Love that. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it's on the beginning of my notes, but yeah. When I, Shall I, I add that? Oh, go oh. ahead. Sorry. Nope, go ahead, Rachel. I was just asking, should I add that as an agenda item for December 30th or? for the workshop? To talk sure, I, I could, um, I've, I've done some research on sister cities. I could talk a little bit about it. I don't know if Kim, if you know some about it from, um, I know there's quite a few towns and cities in Maine that have sister cities. We have one with Russia, but it's greater Portland area. Yeah. Um, there's a, a Russian city but we don't have um, a sister city with Cape Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't we know. We get one. I think it'd be, I think it might be a really neat thing. I do too. I think it'd be awesome. Absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you are familiar with uh, some of what Casco Bay High School does. They've had some pretty interesting projects like um, going to Millinocket and doing video series where kids from Casco Bay High School are going to Millinocket and interviewing people in Millinocket or, or go to West Virginia, you know, it's just like really going to some place that's very different from Portland. And, and so I guess I, I think it'd be intriguing and expansive to be thoughtful about what are we trying to do with this and, and what kind of experiences are we trying to create? Um, and I think, I think just it might be interesting to like look at some of their, their, their model is kind of an interesting one to me about um, really saying we're trying to get people out of the way of living they've known and get to meet and know people mm -hmm. who live really differently. Mm -hmm. And, and where, where is this? Millinocket? Millinocket's doing this? This was, uh, I know a few years ago, Casco Bay High School. Millinocket's up um, north of here in Maine, you know, so, so it's a sort of a lumber, it, it's a, you know, uh, paper mill community yeah, kind of falling right. on hard times, you know, I kind of think. Yeah. Don't make fun of me, Rafina. I don't know that place. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And I'm like, oh my God, we need to take our citizenship back from me. <laughs> I'm, <middle> not- <laughs> I'm sorry. And here I have three friends from Millinocket. I was like, of all places, you chose Millinocket. And, <laughs> and I know three people from Millinocket. That's interesting. Here. It could have been anywhere else and I might not have known. <laughs> yeah, we can right. look into that too, Jim. That's great. Uh, related, yeah. I think, to this is, uh, I'll just toss out this idea. Um, it's something I've been trying to learn more about on my own, which would be how can main towns or cities support the agendas of the Wabanaki people um, in the region and uh, the Penobscot are the closest to us. And, and, you know, one idea was like, how can Cape Elizabeth support the agendas of the Penobscot nation? and set an example because um, there are a lot of main towns. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do there too. All right, anybody else? What? I, oh, go ahead, Jim. I'm sorry, just so it doesn't get lost, like like something like that could be floated as an idea. Does that need to like land as an agenda item on on a meeting in the future? Or, or I'm just, I think it's a really great idea. I just, I just, there's so many things floating around, you know, that I, that I wonder how we rescue thing, rescue hmm. ideas and don't have them disappear. So we have um, two regular meetings before the January 13th workshop. I think I've already added four items from this meeting to the next meeting. So maybe if I put that on the meeting agenda or we we hold that for like uh, January, what would it be like the sixth or something? But whatever the meeting is before that. Do you want me to, should I target that for for then? Would the chairs like me to to put Paul's... um, uh, that, we're, that we're talking about what Jim just said about, you know, when you have so many ideas, how we're going to. Uh, no, no, that um, what Paul just brought up about uh, supporting the um, Penobscot Nation, the agenda of the Wabanaki um, peoples, should should we put that on, say, like the January um, meeting so it doesn't get lost and we are able to devote some attention to that? rather than adding it to the next meeting, which already seems to have a lot of cool. items. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I think it's very important or anything that anybody else yeah. wants to add. So we're not forgetting these things, especially the important ones. What do you think, Keela? I, I agree. I think especially just given our, our task, even discussing what we as a committee feel our role is and, and how to include how to be more inclusive because I know Paul, you've mentioned, you know, this a few times. So I think it's important at least to flush out where, you know, where we begin and end with this so that we're not excluding anyone or, or we put bookends on what it is that we are doing. So it doesn't feel like we're excluding, you know, being inclusive or having just bookends on what, what we're tasked with for now. Okay. Well said, Keela, well said. Thank you. I have a question about the- I think Kim brought that up too before, right? That that was important for her. Uh, Well, yeah, and actually I'm sure that if and when um, Rachel Talvarosk has a chance to um, discuss the findings of their um, commission, that plays a huge role in it, the Mm -hmm. Wabanaki, all tribes, all the tribes there yeah yeah can't wait the, the recommendations made there were several that related to um inclusion in the tribes and another th- there's there has been they have definitely done a good job can always improve but you know in really working harder at um 
you know, the issues facing the tribes. And some of the tribes have different, they all have different issues. They're not all the same. Um, and um, and the, the ambassador to the um, Penobscot Nation, Maya, Maya and Dana, she's done quite a good job in terms of outreach and uh, serving as the legislative liaison to um, the tribe in the Penobscot. So, and she's an incredible speaker and writer too. Um, so it's definitely moving, but it's, you know, it's kind of got the fits and starts going on. And um, this, these recommendations that um, this commission that Rachel Talbot Ross chaired has a lot of bills proposed, but they don't know how far a lot of them will go, but um, definitely the Wabanaki tribes have a big part of that process. Great, we're all gonna get an education there. Yeah. I have a quick question. The DEI task force, I've been in touch with Shukriya Weir and I'm trying to keep her updated. You know, she's about as busy as you are, Melanie, and, and a bunch of other folks. And, um, you know, she she would like to plug in. And um, so uh, my understanding was that DEI task force did not include parents. Oh, you, you know I'm special, Paul. No. No, I'm, I was, that's why I'm bringing this up is because I was glad to hear that you are tapped in, that you're connected. And I'm just wondering, like. I, I am the only parent. And then the school board uh, uh, chair, um, Kathy Stankard, um, but the rest are teachers. Okay. I just want, I mean, you know, Shukriya, like. She, she just doesn't feel like she's been included in the loop of what's happening. Oh, then I will certainly reach out to her and reach out to Kathy and, and see if she can uh, become a member. Great. Yep, sure thing. I'll do that tomorrow. It's tomorrow. I don't even know what today is. So yeah, tomorrow <laughs> <Friday>. <laughs> I'll reach out to her tomorrow. Thanks for telling me that. And I have one other thing on, on my list, it's separate. I, I don't know, this is just new business. So it's something you mentioned, uh, Melanie, and I just sort of wanna like put it up, lift it up, which is protocol for with um, chairs of this committee and how information should be submitted and what's appropriate and respectful. And um, I just like to be clear about that for myself but also hear some discussion about it from the chairs, particularly. <laughs> um, so speaking of that, and I'm not quite sure where Paul's going with this, so I'll, I'll find out soon, but I, I did want to mention, and I'm not sure if, I, if Keela and I have addressed this or anybody else, but so Keela and I are going to do every other. So if, if we have not said that, I, su I really apologize for not communicating that or, um, but, you know, she'll do one, I'll do the next, she'll do one, she'll lead the next, you know, so I just want to make sure you guys know that, and oh. that might have been something we did not uh, discuss, so uh, moving forward, that's how um, that'll work, and uh, if anybody has any questions about that, please let us know, um, but Paul, what are you talking about? Is that it? No, I mean, I'm glad you brought that up, but I got the sense I got the sense that there would be a way to filter ideas and, uh, you know, agenda ideas and documents and whatever, like all that. I heard, I thought I heard you say like, it would be appropriate to oh, yeah, deliver God. that to the, the chairs. Yes. And then from the chairs, then, you know, certain things would go to Rachel or, or whatever. And I just wanted to hear more about that. Okay. Yeah. So you're talking about what I said tonight. Yes. Yes. Okay. So what, what I was mentioning is that, um, you know, um, Keela and I are co-chairs here and um, anything, uh, it'd be much easier if it just came to us. Um, and then, um, you know, if we needed to 
bring anything to Valerie Devereaux's attention, we would, or you know, to the town council. Um, I, I think that what what Paul is getting at um, that would be helpful. Um, that and and just understood that that's what we would do. Or my question would be: Is that so for how, what is, I guess, what is status quo with regards to things like this? I know just from United Way, our chairs, I manage groups, so I pretty much do all the work and feed the chairs the information and that's how it happens or is this is a little different? So I don't know like how, I guess, Valerie, Kim, do either of you have any suggestions? How does this work? I think that's how it would work. With with the town council, um, if, if a council wants something on the agenda, we contact the town manager. We don't contact each other. Um, you might send something to the chair, but usually it's the town manager. So I'm guessing that if um, during the week I think of something, oh, what do you think about this being on the agenda? I would email the two of you and then you would say, yay or nay or let's talk about it as new business and if you said yes then i'm guessing you would contact um rachel and have it put on the agenda that way it's not an email that i'm sending to everybody about something to put on the agenda is that kind of what you're talking about paul yeah i again just just what i was hearing melanie say earlier i just want to support that it sounds like it makes sense and and also, you know, I, I sort of heard it as a, almost as a proposal or, or a recommendation. So I just want to support that. Like if it's a motion, I would second it. <laughs> so would it be helpful if I uh, send out like a, like, because things have to be posted a week in advance to send out like a couple days before that, a reminder that the agenda is going to need to be posted to to the chairs, or like so that I can make sure that whatever needs to be on the agenda is included. It was really helpful this time that we identified things deliberately to go on the agenda for next time. So when I'm doing the minutes, I can I can also create the agenda based on that. Do you want me to send you like the draft agenda the first like what what would be the most helpful in terms of you you've been that. doing a great you've been doing a great job with um you know you'll you'll message me or email me or you know here's the agenda or here's what i'm thinking or what would you like to add um i'm assuming you do that with both keila and i um that she's probably getting it too um and that we just you know agree on that or yes i want to add this um but you know this is why it's a great conversation to have Paul right now is because we're getting a little more further along and a little more advanced and it's getting a little more detailed and a little more complicated and there's more stuff that it would be yeah easier if you know you just email us and now we're starting to talk about it so we already know what's going to be on the agenda and then if anything else needs to be on it you know we communicate that like a day or two before what do you think, Keila? I I guess I would be curious to hear what everyone else who hasn't spoken, Diraj, Jim, Rafina, what are you know, what are your thoughts? Is, does this feel democratic? Do you would you there's a part of me that says if you want it on the agenda, it should be on the agenda. We're all in this committee. I don't want to feel like I'm vetting what's on the agenda or not. And then at the same time, if this is I guess if this is process oriented, it makes things smoother, then I think whatever is comfortable for the group is comfortable for me. I think from a process standpoint, if it makes sense, we should keep it. But I think uh, as, uh, as a committee, I think, I guess each one of us feel right. If something is important, we can bring it up to the committee uh, and, and discuss it. and move it to the next meeting right i mean bring it up and talk about it in the next one um yeah uh, i think from the process maybe it makes sense to do it um uh, but i'm not sure <laughs> yeah. 
I, I think it probably would make us more efficient. And, and I think the scale of work that we are sort of taking on makes me quail sometimes. And so I, I, I think that if we could condense it and say, that's a great idea, let's take that up in February once we've got our charge done or something, that, that makes a lot of sense to me to be able to sequence things over time so that we get what needs to be done next done. You know, we get through the departments or we, you know, we. I think it would help us have an order of business as to, as to prioritizing. So I would be for that. And I, I would, I would trust you guys to, mm -hmm. you know, some ideas will get airtime and some won't. That's all right. Yep. Rafina. Three. You know, like, you know, we're, we're a cohesive group, you know, and what Keila said, you know, having somebody wants it on the agenda, you know, I don't have any problem with it. I think it's working fine. Kim, I didn't mean to leave you out in your name. I was sort of went this way through my, but that's fine. That's fine. Actually, I'm just really like, I just realized like what I did, like I just went straight to Rachel about um, Rachel Talbot Ross getting on the agenda and I didn't even contact you you know, both of the chairs and I apologize. I just, I thought I remember saying that I think that they were going to speak on the 17th. And yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah it was probably uh, my error that I don't think it was finalized though. So I, I didn't think to put yeah. it on the agenda, but. Finalized at the last minute, but yes, so yeah. But it, yeah, I think the process, you know, um, consistency is good and I'm happy to go through the chairs and that's fine, you know. You know, and they, they, then the idea would be for you to determine what is going to be placed on the agenda for a, a certain meeting, correct? Yeah. yeah. Fine. Amy, are you okay with that idea? Yes. <laughs> okay. Just I want to check in with you. Well, that way, if if people have communicated with the chairs about agenda items and I draft the agenda and share it with the chairs, they will know if something's missing so that that, they, right. that makes sense. Or possibly to be, I don't know, just email and I are getting to know each other better, but um, CCing. Rachel, so that you just have a log of it, because I think about the mm -hmm. um, that training that we did in the beginning about communications, and just so that there's a, another layer of transparency around what it is that's being communicated. It, I think it would then feel, you know, you can read them, ignore it, but there's just one more person who's seeing the flow of the communications, so we sure. can you know, have that kind of transparency. I'm looking at time. What, what, what were? Oh, we're done. Um, yeah. We have to <laughs> adjourn. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just need to make oh, a motion. Oh. Valerie does want to say something. I, I just want to mention that we do have an attendee, and this would be the time that um, if the attendee wants to raise their hand, if they have any questions or anything they want to ask, that they could do that before we um, adjourn the meeting. Very nice. And she do. So let me move her to panelists. Okay. Padra, are you there? Unmute. Yo, hi. hi. I, um, I'm loving this meeting and I love all the ideas. That's all. I'm just excited. Um, <laughs> I wonder, could it, could there be a uh, a, a sister nation. I don't know what's appropriate or not, but it could be a interesting way of combining things. Sister city, a sister nation. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, especially since there's so many towns in Maine. If that's a part of the idea, is starting something and being part of something. Mm -hmm. I don't know how mm -hmm. that fits, but anyway, it's very inspiring meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Audra. It's great to see you. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So we'll talk about our sister city and sister nation uh, soon. And if I can get a motion to adjourn this fantastic meeting, thank you all.
another great meeting. Really great. I appreciate you all. Now, can I'll, I get a motion? I'll make a motion. Yeah, to adjourn. Yeah. Everybody, okay. make a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Second. Paul seconded. All right. Uh, Rafina. Yes. Uh, Kim. Yes. Jim. Yes. Hila. Yes. Melanie. Yes, please. Paul. <laughs> yes. And Diraj. Yes. All right. The meeting is adjourned at 9 16 p.m. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 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 I appreciate you all. Yeah.